Y'all, thank you for coming. As you may know, at, at noon today, I declared a state of emergency for the state of South Carolina as a precaution. It is a precaution. This is not an order of evacuation. I repeat, this is not an order of mandatory evacuation. This is a state of emergency, meaning we are in a state of emergency. Something is likely to happen and we need to get prepared. This declaration officially allows the emergency management officials to begin execution of our state hurricane preparedness plan on the state and the local level. It also allows the National Guard to preposition resources, move people, and stage resources in anticipation of evacuation, probably of the low country, and in anticipation of landfall of the hurricane and recovery, which will follow the landfall. Just a few moments ago, I gave official approval to execute the state mass transportation plan, which allows FEMA and the National Guard to begin contracting with commercial entities, companies, for the purpose of evacuating those without transportation or means to obtain transportation. That typically will mean buses. That is, they have the authority to start making those financial arrangements. Uh, I'm also requesting a presidential disaster declaration in advance of the hurricane so that we will be able to receive federal aid and resources in order to prepare for the landfall impact if and when it comes. We do not know when or if it will come, and we don't know how strong it will be if it comes. According to the National Weather Service and others, it is a Category 3 hurricane at this time. That was the same as Hugo. Hurricane Matthew was a Category 1 hurricane. That means this is, if it hits in the strength that it now has, when it gets here, it will be like Hurricane Hugo, if it hits. The main message, the main message that I want to bring to the people is two things. One is you could not have a better, more prepared, more professional team and network around the state than we have. We are prepared. We are prepared in resources, we've had training, we're prepared in coordination and communication, and we're prepared all the way from the state, the county levels, all across the state. But what we cannot do is make the citizens prepare. So what we are urging you to do, all citizens, is get prepared. Just assume or pretend that a Category 3 hurricane is arriving tomorrow morning and do what you would do then now and get ready. Because when that hurricane is coming, when it gets close, it's too late. So if you have important papers that need to be saved, get them saved. If you have animals that you need to look after, do it. If you have prescription medicines, things of that nature, get ready. Just pretend, assume that you're having to leave your home or your business and not come back for several days. You won't be allowed to come back. There'll be trees down, power lines down, maybe water, maybe roads washed out. We don't know. We hope for the best, we prepare for the worst. So I say again, now is the time to prepare because when and if I issue the order of mandatory evacuation, that means you must leave and leave then. Now there's a lot going on between now and then. We have plans for the Highway Patrol, Department of Transportation, the National Guard, law enforcement, and everybody connected therein all across the state. We have plans and things are being set in motion now. 
The only thing we do not have the authority to order is the preparedness of the citizens. So get prepared. Do the things now that you would do if the hurricane were knocking on your door. In that way, we'll save life, we'll save property, and we'll be able to recover quickly, much more quickly, if and when the hurricane strikes. Now, I say again, I'm not ordering an evacuation at this time, but we will do that at the appropriate time when and if it gets here. So again, we are prepared. We want every citizen to be prepared. Again, just pretend that the hurricane is going to be here in the morning and do now what you would do then. If you have outdoor furniture that's loose and fly around, tie it up, put it inside. If, if you have uh, windows that need to be battened down, need to lock doors, things you need to store, go ahead and do it. Medicines, pretend that you're going to be leaving home for several days and you don't know when you're going to come back. If relatives need to know where you are, if you need to make arrangements to go someplace, if your car's battery's been dead, better fix it. If you don't have gas in your vehicle, better get some. If you don't have a map on how to get around, better get one. And remember this, there'll be a lot of misinformation going on. We have a lot of social media. A lot of people will be very helpful, but there'll be some that will be dead wrong. When they say this road is out or that road is flooded, they may be dead wrong. Listen to the official sources. Listen to the official sources and do what they say. We've planned for this, we will have the official information and it will be reliable and you need to be ready to listen to it. So have your radios on, have your cell phones charged, be sure to take your chargers with you. All those things that you, you would do if you have to leave now, go ahead and get them done. And if we're lucky, we won't need to leave. If we're unlucky, we'll, we'll wish we left a little earlier than we did. And for those uh, folks who determine that they want to stay in their homes or stay in their businesses despite an evacuation order, we can't come get you. After a certain period, we can't come anymore and risk the lives of people to come get you. You'll be on your own. So when we say go, and if we say go, when we say go, that means it's time to go. I'd now like to ask Director Stinson and General Livingston. General, anything you'd like to add, sir? Yes, Governor. Thank you, Governor. Uh, just want to emphasize a couple of points Governor made. Uh, Irma is a very dangerous storm. Uh, we don't know where Irma is going to hit, if it's going to even hit the East Coast. Uh, some of the tracks are taking it further east, uh, but uh, we just don't know. We'll know better in the next 24 to 48 hours uh, where the storm will be headed. Uh, we are continuing preparations, Team South Carolina under the governor's direction. Uh, all of the agencies uh, that report to the governor, all the counties, all the cities, we're taking preparations like we're going to see uh, hurricane uh, or tropical storm force winds uh, coming in around uh, Sunday or Monday. That doesn't mean it's going to happen, but uh, we are preparing. We encourage you to prepare. Have a plan, as governor says, get ready to move, and then when the word comes, uh, you'll be prepared. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think most of you know our job here at EMD is to coordinate the state response under uh, the governor's uh, direction, obviously, and that involves not just the state agencies, but also involves the local authorities, the counties. We're in constant contact with the counties to make sure that uh, we're up to date on any unmet needs that they might have at this time. Right now, we don't know of any, uh, but it takes a while to put these plans into effect, so obviously we need to start the coordination now. Um, we uh, obviously have a very experienced team in South Carolina. Uh, probably one of the best uh, training experiences we went through recently was Hurricane Matthew last year, and that pretty much validated our plans, uh, especially in terms of the evacuation piece. So, you know, we're in a, we're in a pretty good place. And as said earlier, uh, we've got really good emergency management professionals throughout the state of South Carolina. And when the need comes, we'll have those from FEMA and the federal government as well. Um, one thing I did want to mention, uh, also in kind of uh, in relation to what General, uh, uh, Governor McMaster talked about, was pe personal preparedness, the hurricane guide. 
uh, is chock full of information that can get you ready for any kind of situation, not just a hurricane, but it's pretty much focused on the hurricane, but talks about what you need to do before, during, and after the hurricane, and that's all written down in there. It's available in a number of means. It's available at Walgreens. It's available at Coastal DMV offices, and also on our website at scemd.org. So it's just chock full of information, and highly suggest you take some time and, and take a look at that, um, and you'll definitely be more prepared. Sir? Any questions? Uh, yes. I yes, ma'am. Did you say you already have, or you will be asking for a federal declaration? Will be. Okay. Soon. How soon? This afternoon. Governor, with all the other problems we have in the wildfires and RV, what have you heard from the federal government so far about their level of preparedness to be able to help not just us, but Georgia, Florida, all the other areas that will be affected by that? They, they are prepared, and they've been through the same things that, that we've been through. And, of course, with the recent experience of just in the last few weeks, they are, they, they are on high alert. Governor, do you know, I know it's hard to say right now what the storm's going to do, but do you have a day in mind that you think you will make a decision about evacuations of even along the coast? It, it's, a, it, it's a wild guess almost, but probably Friday. Probably. And if and when you decide to order evacuations, have you made a decision about lane reversals on 26? Those decisions are, are being made. Uh, they've been, uh, all of those plans have, have already been laid out, but uh, some of it will depend on uh, when the storm gets in, which direction it's coming from. Are there emergency shelters already open for folks who would like to get out early just in case? I don't know that it's open yet. No, there's none open right now. Are they in the process of being set up at this point? And, and that's part of the preparation process is, is that we're identifying those locations and the uh, staffing that's required for, uh, for you know, operational. And the National Guard played a big role during the flood in 2015. Uh, are there preparations being done? Are they being called out to get set up? General? Uh, as mentioned before, we're, we're way ahead of the power curve right now, so we're, we've still got about another 24 hours before we'll start making some of those decisions. Uh, but we do have our troops alerted. Uh, we are receiving the uh, help that we sent to Texas. They're coming back to South Carolina. They, they finished the mission there. Uh, so we, we will be prepared, and uh, uh, we'll be notifying people. On the, and you, you ask about the centers. Once the evacuation orders are, are put out, that's when the centers will be available. And those evacuations orders will be in plenty of time for people to leave. We don't even know what this storm's going to do yet, the, but the governor just wants to, us to make sure we're completely ready, like Team South Carolina is always completely ready. So, General, the National Guard hasn't been activated yet? Yeah, it has not. In terms of the buses, would they would y'all be using school buses again from the upstate, or? It's a it's going to be a combination. We will use some school buses, also use some uh, contracted uh, commercial buses, uh, and uh, and also some FEMA assistance. So it's kind of a hybrid operation. So it's got a lot of flexibility to it. Are any of you concerned that with the evacuations that will be hitting Florida? coming through our area that that's going to complicate any evacuations orders we may have here in South Carolina as far as traffic and hotels that sort of thing we uh, we stay in contact as a special group basically that monitors that particular situation there uh, and we've uh, activated them before and to coordinate the traffic between Florida Georgia and us uh, and potentially North Carolina so that's that's all part of that planning process to make sure that we're all on the same page and on that point, there's a lot of coordination going on. I spoke to Governor Rick Scott a little while ago, and, and he asked that, that we, uh, that I issued an executive order to allow the um, weight limits on trucks to be uh, waived in order to have supplies and gas and things moving. Of course, we already, had already done that uh, for Texas, so it's already in effect. There's a lot of communication going on. Governor, have you spoken with the president yet? No, sir. No, sir, I have not. More questions? You expect you will at yes, some point sir. soon? Yes, sir. Governor, if I can make one more point, please. please sir. Uh, we, we talked about the hurricane guide being on SEMD.org. 
There's great information, up-to-date information on the storm and links to all of the official sites on scemd.org. So I encourage you to use that website to uh, go to where you need to uh, to keep up to date as far as the storm's progress and things that we're doing in South Carolina. And I want to say again, this is we're urging people to be prepared. There's an enormous amount of good, reliable information in this booklet and also on that website. And, and of course, with the social media we have, there'll be a lot of people pro trying to provide helpful information that will turn out to be inaccurate. So I would urge all the citizens to be very careful, go to these official websites, talk to the people who know, listen to the people uh, who know, and they'll, they'll be readily identifiable, and that'll uh, preclude a whole lot of problems. So be pre now's the time to prepare. When it's too late, it's too late. And that's when we really have a lot of a lot of sadness. Thank you very much for coming out, and we will keep you informed. Thank you.